barely a hint of traffic. Stores shut. The environment feels very cold. It's as if COVID happened again. It's not a virus, but another epidemic of violence that has struck Ecuador. <laughs> Hours earlier, heavily armed gang members stormed a TV network in Guayaquil during a live broadcast. The attackers took hostages and threatened the president on air to not, in the words, play with the mafia. While ordinary Ecuadorians watch the grotesque scene unfold in real time, police eventually arrested 13 gunmen and freed the terrified journalists. Thanks to God, we are alive because it was an extremely violent attack. They shot one of our cameramen in the leg, broke the arm of another one. This was one scene in a deadly show of coordinated violence that has been shaking the South American country since the president declared a state of emergency on Monday. <laughs> After one of the country's most notorious drug lords, Adolfo Fito Macias, escaped from a prison in Guayaquil on Sunday. Since then, gangs have seemingly declared all-out war on Ecuador's authorities. Taking over prisons and holding scores of guards hostage, some have been executed. Yesterday, President Daniel Noboa escalated the state of emergency even further and designated 22 gangs as terrorist organizations, with the army now on Ecuador's streets. A partir de este momento, from this moment, all terrorist groups identified in the president's decree are military targets. The present and future of our homeland is at stake, and any act of terror will not make us give up. The Andean nation has turned from a top backpacker's destination to one of South America's most dangerous countries. Gangs linked to Mexican and Colombian cartels have battled for control of lucrative drug smuggling routes. Last year, presidential candidate and anti-corruption activist Fernando Villavicencio was assassinated in broad daylight. Fito Macias, the same drug lord who escaped prison on Sunday, had threatened to kill him, Villavicencio warned. President Novoa campaigned on a promise to restore security to the country. Last week, he announced a national referendum for stricter anti-crime laws and measures. Today, the country is holding its breath, fearing what comes next.